Hi, I'm Kim and I'm going to talk about a well-known clothing company called Misguided. I will be discussing the marketing strategies and theories Misguided uses to attract customers and consumers such as myself. First of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit about market orientation. This is a development of an organisation's approach to the generation and collection of market intelligence across different departments and organisations responsive to that knowledge. Misguided have many new consumer capabilities which market their brand. For example, we now have the ability to shop off phones, laptops and in store, as well as access their website through emails and social media apps. Promotions and competitions are used to intrigue people to go on Misguided and purchase their products. For example... 50% off, you're going to go, you're going to get it if you see it in your emails. <laughs> there are many other things that influence people to go on Misguided and purchase their products. Friends, celebrities, Instagrammers, bloggers and trends. Misguided website expresses that everything they create is actually informed by their customers and global influences such as social media. I think this is why the self-concept approach is benefiting Misguided in terms of marketing. According to Kay Keegan at Veblen in 1913, he declared that clothing did more than protect the body. Clothing and fashion are often used to indicate and communicate social worth or status. People make judgments concerning people's status depending on what they're seen wearing. For example, I have over 6,000 Instagram followers. Keeping up with my look and how I dress is something that's important, otherwise I lose Instagram followers. I need to dress in what people want me to sit, like be dressed in. Normally, when us girls see something dressed well either on a model or friend, we'll buy it ourselves, automatically assuming it'll look nice on us too. This guy did have collaborations with so many celebrities that young girls like me aspire to be like. This plays a huge part in gaining customers and sales. As it says in the Telegraph, when they partnered with singer Nicole Scherzinger launching her first clothing range, the profits raised from 900000 to 5.5 million. This is because we purchase due to who she is and the clothes are almost seen as limited edition. Also, we get the idea that wearing her clothes increases our social status. For misguided, celebrity endorsements such as Pioneer and Carly Bible help promote their product to look like certain celebrities and be inspired by them may be the intention for most customers. According to Baines et al, the theory of planned behaviour explains that the behaviour is brought about by our own intention to act in a specific way. This links to the self-concept approach. I feel that I have to buy something new uh, every time I go out, so I'd go on misguided and look at outfits on models and celebrities to decide what I want to buy. To decide on this new outfit, I would use a buy class called New Task. According to Baines et al, there are three types of buying. New Task, Modified rebuy and straight rebuy. Like I said, I would use new task as I'm looking for something completely new and different. I'd compare different clothes, looks and colours. This would take me longer than if I was to purchase something I'd previously had in a different colour or a casual top. These are considered straight buys as they're reorders on a routine basis. These two ways are also known as a limited problem solving which is less frequent purchase and more deliberate decision process and routine problem solving, regular purchase and a short decision process. A regular short decision process would be as if, if I were going to buy just because I saw a discount, I'm only spending my money because there is a discount on, I don't actually need anything, so it wouldn't really, you know, I wouldn't be spending a lot of time thinking about that. The consumer proposition acquisition is a consideration of social class and lifestyle, influencing consumer behaviour, as said in Baines et al. This consists of six stages. So let's say I wanted a new pair of heels because my old ones had broken. That is my motive. I'd consider what type of heels I want, whether they're going to be block heels, court heels, what colour. This is information gathering. Then, after this, I'd decide where would be best to purchase them from. So, Misguided, Topshop, Miss Selfridge. I'd look everywhere, but then again, Misguided are cheap and good quality. I'd always end up going back to them. This is proportion evaluation. This is then followed by proportion selection. I'd select the heels. If they didn't have my size, I'd have to reevaluate. Delivery would be the next step, and with this, Misguided are quite quick. What would I do if I regret the purchase? I'd keep the heels because a new pair of heels is a new pair of heels. So, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Back to proportion evaluation. I would look at the prices of places such as Topshop and Miss Selfridge and compare them to Misguided. As you can see in this diagram created by Chelsea Wallace, Misguided clothes are the same quality as Topshop, but they're cheaper. So that's probably why I would go towards Misguided because it's more for students. They have student discount. I can't really afford to be spending loads of money on just a simple top or maybe a dress for a night out. In conclusion, all the strategies and theories that I've spoken about benefit the market of misguided in many ways and I will continue to purchase and be influenced by their celebrity endorsements and trendy clothes.